May I want to say good evening, everybody. So, I have a good Okay, I'm reasonable. I have to say that I really am very happy to be here. There's just one shortcoming. I need a t shirt like that. Yes, like yours. No, what you need. Like yours. Yes. I need a t shirt like that. You should have told me about that. And I want to congratulate and thank you for showing us Jeff Jones and in that picture. I have a small one at home. I will probably sit a little later, but I want to just begin um, standing. I'm wearing white because in my mind, this is the color that Jeff preferred. If it's true, put your hands together. But Oh, it's good to see you, and you should have been in white too, but we'll give you a break. <laughs> you too, Greg, you should have been in, in white. So, but it's absurd. <laughs> well, I would like to thank Sobers Esprit, because I thought it was Sobers who was inviting me specially to be here. So, Sobers, thank you on, on your behalf and on behalf of whoever you were representing when you asked me to be here. I would also like to thank Jeff's family and the community, all of you, as a whole, for the opportunity to come and to bask in the sunlight and the moonlight that Jeff Joe has left behind. What I am most pleased about is my certainty that Jeff Joe would have wanted us to congregate like this this evening, to mark his death as well as to recall the many moments within which we share in his life. So for Jeff Joe, let me know. I will sit down. I was asked to share some reflections entitled Jeff Joe, the musical icon. I intend to share some of what I know of that man, his music, his influence, his reach, and the lessons of his life and death as I see them. The first thing I heard about Jeff was that he was a singer of a band from Dominica known as the Grammars. And with the tunes about Soleil Tosho, Sukuya, and Koshma, that band was making it big abroad, especially in the French departments of Wolf and Martinique, just as Gordon Henderson and Exile One had done a little earlier with Akiyaka, with Leshiga, Nideo, and so on. Up to that time, I was not interested in music as a career. But I remember being quite proud that Jeff and the Grammars and so many other talented Dominicans were bringing a positive and tangible Dominican message to the world. Jeff was undoubtedly a part of the movement of making a Dominican noise. And what a noise it was. While Cotton Henderson may have been one who recorded history and articulated the various thoughts on feminism and the memory of slavery, Jeff Joe was running and prancing up and down the stage. His long, lanky frame, some people used to call him men, was tirelessly capturing the beat of the Kadav Slipso numbers. And he did his own kind of dance, aggressively egging on the audience to raise their hands, to sing, to dance, and to jump. And how we would say, Live in Ame, live in Ame, Pala, Ipala. And everybody was in it. He used to say, Sukte, Sukte, Dosse, Quiye. You remember that? Avancé. Avancé. He 
used to make them have more stay. They used to go far, you see, far, land in the atom, go far there and have more stay, and they obey his commands. Nobody could determine from where Jeff's energy came. In Martinique, they refer to him as being a bet the same. That is, a stage animal who, even if he appeared to be half dead before coming on stage, and that didn't happen often enough, but he would rapidly evolve into a stage machine, leading his musicians into a feverish pitch that involuntarily drove his feet and his arms into doing things that only Jeff's crowd could do. Jeff was an assembler of persons. He demonstrated the power of uniting and making us do things together. Living a man, living a man, living a man. Even the bishop said it at his funeral. And Pala and Paisi, you just cannot forget Jeff. And he's created something and he had a kind of something in his voice, you know, that used to come out before he started singing Koshima. That kind of thing was Jeff. Yes. And if you did not participate, you felt like a fool. Jeff was never afraid of the tasks ahead. He was a working man, not a lazy person. And wherever the music called him, he felt he had to go. The greater part of his repertoire was in Kadas and in Creole. And I purposely say it like that because I don't like to hear people calling it Creole and other things. It's Creole, it's a Sanwa. Although we often also heard him sing Reggae. Reggae is nice. So nobody can say I didn't sing. As well as the occasional ballad. Remember what he wrote for Isaiah Thomas? The one that somebody wanted me to sing at the funeral and I said, mm -hmm. if I start to sing that I won't finish. Because it, it was so touching because it was like a prophecy as if he was singing for himself. And he said, you know, he was in that new place of rest. He knew he was beginning a new life. But he really would have liked to feel the sun. That was Jeff. No, my natural face, that is. And he touched, and I think he believed deeply in spiritual, spiritual things. He prayed openly. He sang. I sincerely hope he got that force. He had great respect for his mother and for all older ladies. This respect led him to add to his repertoire and to the gussies, I am. In fact, people used to believe it was Jeff who had first sung I Mama because you know it became so much part of him. Jeff was also a very generous person. And in his generosity, he never he was never paid when he was asked to do something for seniors. I know that personally. I recall one singing in Moon and being told that the following weekend, Jeff was going to be there in the same town, singing for the election one moon. It's a queen show in which senior ladies took part, like old Madame Wolf, that kind of thing. He understood immediately that they had a limited budget and that the show probably would not be able to pay him. So he said, don't oh, worry, that man, I'll do that for you and I will do that. That was Jeff. One never got tired of Jeff or of his song. Like a professional, he gave the people what they wanted, time and time again. Playing around with arrangements 
and putting together bits of various songs into an apparently never-ending medley. Jeff knew how to maintain your interest and your attention. Off stage, Jeff was a little less aggressive, if not more quiet. He was the type whom you either liked or you disliked. People would smile when Jeff would come into a room or come in a corner where you're standing talking. And you could never say he left you indifferent. When he spoke to you, it was as if he had never gone away. He would come sometimes from Martinique, from Guadeloupe, bearing you some wine, yogurt, chocolate, and those other goodies, cheese, camembert. Jeff made it a habit to call on his friends and to bring little gifts. His friends, like his fans, were many. They were in Africa, in Europe, in the Caribbean, in America, everywhere. Jeff had friends and Jeff was known as a phenomenon, an icon of Caribbean music. Not one who had chosen to do music, but one that music had chosen. Politicians and other community leaders recognized the power he had over people and how he could instill joy and positive excitement into a crowd. Therefore, he would be invited to join in their meetings, their festivals, and whatever other events they had organized. He was named ambassador of Martinique in recent years. In fact, ambassador of Fort France, which is the capital of Martinique. And Lime went ahead and bestowed upon him a lifetime award. I was witness to that and we were both dressed in white. Jeff received his award, his award and I received mine. And we took a lovely photograph together. He called me, he used to call me his little sister, although I am older. <laughs> I don't know if I look like a little sister, or if it was just the, the talks. And I mean, maybe it was just the, the talks. <laughs> The world got to know about Jeff's achievements and they made demands on his talents, on his time, and also on his failing death, on failing health. I was concerned when towards the end I kept hearing of his frequent plane and boat rides. He appeared to be truly unstoppable at that time and like the energizer on he kept going and going and going and going. I said, I would say that until you laugh, but you're not laughing. <laughs> I am trying to make light of it because up to now, it is not automatic for me to speak about Jeff as if he has gone. I remember during our rehearsals, Mikael and I, we sang together at the World Hero Music Festival. This year, we were very honored to be chosen because they don't choose you every year, you know. So we were very honored. So much thank them so for us. And I remember during rehearsal, we were feeling Jeff in the room. But it, it was a good vibe. His spirit was there, and I knew he was happy as to how we did this show, the songs. You know, and you can clap for us, you know. Because we really gave him a lot of honor. And we chatted about the phenomenon that he was, that he is. And we were saying while we were practicing, supposing a Sukuya came there. <laughs> or what if there was a day back in the show? As, and that's the story I have about Mideva, that it happened at a club in Cayenne, French Guyana. When somebody came in and there were lots of people, as he says, to the one, come on to it, to the one, 
and then it became a little too tight and they marbles. And you know, when you have small close communities, you have their back. So he may have been thinking about St. Joseph when he wrote that one. And that's okay, Mr. Charles. We will accept that part of the story too. Because Jeff was St. Joe and St. Joe was Jeff. Yes. So, yes, you can, you can clap. It's Jeff, it's St. Joe. Put your hands together for that. I remember too, Mikiel and I screamed during the practice. Just before I sang, David the Tom, the creation. Jeff went far. Creation. And he started to sing way about it, that particular one. Yes. But again, that was the man. And we were wondering, when we did that, will we hear other screams? One thing we agreed on though is that Jeff would have liked the medley we created with his songs. He would have been happy that his fellow Dominican artists paid attention and did justice to his song. And even if I say so myself, I will be good. I'm also saying that because every media person from Warren and Batnik spoke about that medley when they reported about the festival. So when I traveled afterwards, everybody would tell me that they knew that Ophelia, and sometimes they called her Michelle Henderson, or the daughter of Gordon Henderson, some thought it's my daughter, but they remembered the medley that we did in honor of Jeff. It was good being able to demonstrate how he was revered among his people. Some felt that Dominica took rather long to show that reverence and appreciation and that we did not rise sufficiently to match the large and long show that they had in Martinique for Jeff. Martinique, which he made his second home. And I have to say that the comments led me to think. I remember telling a friend of mine, so that is what I will get, so I must watch well for me to see what Jeff gets, for me to know what I will get, or maybe what I will not get, you know, so I, I, I made that kind of reflection. But I also learned or tried to think about deeper things. I learned that sometimes grief can make us feel handicapped and unable to react appropriately or in a timely fashion. I learned that the outpouring of love for Jeff was overwhelming. I saw it myself. I was in that parade that brought him home. And it would have been nice if during his lifetime we could have found more ways to express that love and appreciation for the <laughs> I learned that our artists should ensure that as we go along, that the administrative and the managerial aspects of our work is ensured for future security. I learned that our artistic creators must understand and secure all aspects of our copyright as these pertain to the registration of our works and the compensation that we can earn for the use of those works. I was about to say that, eh? And I have learned that what happens to one Dominican artist affects all the others. And all Dominicans as well. I'm saying that because since Jeff died, people are calling me to sing. And they want me to pay homage to Jeff. So I'm getting a few more, more shows. Sorry, Daddy. I write it on that one. So I've been to French Guyana and they asked me to come to Antigua and everybody's talking about Jeff. And there's also something in one group that Dominica is going to do as a group and of course they're talking about Jeff. 
For this reason, my friends, we are heavy hearted that he has passed. But I heard one guy say, he did not go too far. Remembering him does not disturb his rest. His body of work, all of that work, is part of our culture and part of our heritage. Because he lived and because of the manner in which he created and shared and toiled, we are a richer people. I heard your representative in the Queen show say that St. Joseph might not have plenty of money, but St. Joe is rich. St. Joe is a rich community. Because of Jeff, Dominica is a richer nation. And the Caribbean is a richer region. Thank you. Yes, I'm